research was developed by Betuova from Maris and Stefania Will from Skin. So our presentation is going to consist on a first on a, in, in, in an introduction that Hugo is going to give to you, presenting the topic and the importance of the, of the research. I'm going to present you the question and the methods we use to answer it. Then we're going to go through the results, discussion, uh, conclusion, and finally the acknowledgments. So, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, some fishes, some sea urchins, and uh, some algae. So why first talk about the sea urchins? They are uh, considered as key species in some marine environments and they can have a high impact on the communities especially on the algal community because of the grazing because uh, our sea urchins are mostly herbivorous so they eat algae and uh, they are regulated by fishes so predators of the sea urchins and uh, according to the literature we can say that uh, when there is a lot of predators there is less sea urchin and then uh, there is a bigger algal community so there is more algae coverage and uh, when there is less fishes there is uh, a bigger number of sea urchins and so the algal community is less important and there is a, a really a few um, algae coverage so this coverage uh, is important because uh, algal community is one of the most important uh, primary producer in the coastal marine environment and uh, it gives a lot of habitat and shelter to the other species. Uh, so the sea urchins are really important and can impact uh, the environment and all the resources we can gather and uh, the uses we can do from the environment because sea urchins can transform a algal forest into a barren for example. So um, now we're going to, Troy and I are going to introduce you the work we did. Okay, so in this background, um, the aim of our study was to uh, uh, explore the relationship there is between the abundance of the sea urchins, the abundance of its predators, and the algal coverage. Uh, this question, we uh, address it through two specific questions. The first one, uh, looking at the relationship between the sea urchin's abundance and the one of its fish, fish predators. And the second one, uh, between the sea urchins and the algal coverage. In order to answer this question, we use the data that has been gathered in Lerans Island, uh, in, the in the Camps Bay, in south of France, from 2013 to 2019, as part of the Lerans Biodiversity Program of the University of d'Azur. So these islands, uh, composed by San Marguerite and San Tonora at South, uh, are part of the Natura 2000 uh, Marine Reserve and also are visited every summer by hundreds of, of tourists that go there and enjoy the beaches and the marine ecosystems. Uh, so regarding sampling, <laughs> the sampling was made, through the, was made every September of this time range except 2017 and uh, it consisted of, of the observation of groups of two or three students uh, uh, of the fishes and invertebrates abundance, Posidonia coverage, uh, substrate composition, amongst other variables, uh, by swimming at the surface of transects, which are, which are basically lines by which the students swam, um, identifying the organisms they saw. This procedure was repeated uh, on 60 sampling points around the two islands, uh, separated from each other of, uh, by 200 meters, and uh, so from all, the, from all the data that was gathered in this monitoring, we choose to, uh, well, we work with the 16 species of algae that uh, were used in the, in the monitoring. And we took the coverage uh, divided into four categories from not present to very abundant. As for urchins, uh, we considered the four species of urchins, the black urchin, the brown, the purple, and the long spine. Uh, here we, we consider the number of individuals for each sampling point. And regarding predators, so for rasses, we, we took four species of rasses, the rainbow rasse, the uh, ornated rasse, sorry, uh, peacock rasse, and five spotted rasse. Also for breams, uh, four species of breams, two banded bream, white sea bream, annular, and gilt headed. Uh, for this one, we also consider the number of, of, um, of individuals, 
and the selection of the species of predators was made due to the research, uh, well, the, the bibliography review, seeing that these were the main uh, predators for the sea urchins in the Mediterranean Sea. So what analysis we did with, with these group studies? Uh, first, well, um, we did some correlation uh, by which, sorry, we did some correlation that um, mainly tries to answer the question of what is the, if there is a linear relationship between two variables. So we saw the, the linear, if there was a linear relationship between the algae coverage, the sea urchin, and between the sea urchins and their predators. For this, we used all years abundance, uh, so uh, removing some outliers. And for checking non-linear links between the groups of study, we use a chi-squared uh, test that basically intends to uh, see if a group of frequencies follows a, a distribution. So we saw if the, our predators follow the sea urchins distribution and if the sea urchins uh, follow the algae distribution. Uh, for this, we used all these abundance uh, of the predators, of the urchins, and the urchins and algae proportions. Additionally, in order to see if the, if the relationship between the abundance was due to maybe another uh, factor, uh, we, we assessed the preference, the possible preference, of the group of organisms to the, to the substrate kind. So now, Ugo is going to go through the research. So uh, after doing all these tests, we found out that uh, for the linear relationship, there is uh, only a weak linear relationship between the algae and the urchin, and between the urchin and the races. There was no significance between uh, the brims and between the, with the both predator together. So uh, we can say, we cannot say that the, um, the there is a linear link and. The linear link is a positive link. So when there is more algae, there is more urchin. And when there is more urchin, there is more races. So it's kind of different than what we saw uh, with the, in the literature. So that's why we used to do the nonlinear relationship. So to see if there is different factors uh, of different importance uh, for the, um, the relationships. So um, for the nonlinear relationship, with the urchins, we used uh, those proportions of the sea urchins. That's what we found uh, in uh, Lerans Island during the sampling. And for the predator abundance, there is uh, clearly a different pattern of distribution. So uh, we, there is a kind of preference for the predators to be on places when there is no urchins or when there is a, l a lot of urchins. So here the category medium abundance of sea urchins is more than two in the sampling point. So this uh, preference is uh, even clearer with only the brims compared to the sea urchins. So the brims prefer places when there is no urchins. Then we did the same thing with the algae coverage to see if the sea urchins prefer some places with more algae or less algae. And we found out that they prefer places where there is a high coverage of algae. So when there is more algae, there is more urchins. That is uh, according to the results we had in the correlation test. But it's kind of different that from what we found in the bibliography, in the research we did to do this. So we are after, we wanted to see if there is another factor that can influence more the distribution than the traffic interaction between those three groups. So where uh, Florina is talking, we'll be talking about the substrates and the preferences of these groups. Okay, so um, for substrates uh, analysis, we considered five kinds of substrates. Sand, pebbles, rocks, Posidonia, and mixed. Mixed is when students uh, recorded more than one of the kinds of, our, of the substrates in the place. And Posidonia is where the coverage of the Posidonia is high or very high, according to the, with, with the student's uh, assessment. Here we found that algae have a preference towards the rocky environments, followed by Posidonia. And here it's important that we understand that when we say that it's a Posidonia substrate, uh, it's not necessarily a homogeneous Posidonia, but it can have some rocks uh, providing, a shell, no, providing substrate um, availability for algae. With sea urchins, we have the same pattern, preferring rocks and Posidonia. 
uh, this is very similar to what has been what has been found in, in other studies in the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, it's the same pattern for the for the predators. For rasses, we have preference for posit for rocks, as well as for brims that have a slight preference for sand. Okay, so what does all these uh, results mean? Now we're gonna make a bit of analysis. Okay, so um, concerning the predators and the urchins, there is no clear, strong, linear link between the abundance of the sea urchins and the, the predators. So we can assume that this from the low abundance of sea urchin, that don't, there is not enough sea urchin in the sampling points to show this linear correlation between the predators and the preys. Uh, and maybe the fish predator's distribution is not following the sea urchin abundance, that's what we found. And we found this predator's uh, distribution is not following because of some predation preferences, for example, because uh, those predators don't eat only sea urchins, they can eat uh, invertebrates or even fishes, and they can have so a substrate preference. We saw that they prefer all rocks, and for example, uh, the, um, the wrasses are kind of uh, demersal fishes, so they are close to um, a shelter point, they have a nest, so they don't go around and they stay at the same place, more or less, and uh, the brims are more, more pelagic than the, the grasses, so maybe that's the difference, and that's a big influence on the, the link between, the abundance link between the sea urchins and the predators. And during the sampling, uh, maybe uh, small sea urchins were neglected because of the sampling form, because we were sampling by just swimming and looking at what we saw. So uh, most of the sea urchins maybe were hidden or were too small to be seen, so we didn't count them and they are not uh, appearing in the data sets, so they are not part of the analysis we did. So now uh, Florina is going to talk about a bit o more of algae. Okay, um, so regarding the relationship between urchins and, and algae coverage, we found that sea urchins seem to be more abundant where there is a higher uh, coverage of algae. This can be partially explained by the habitat preference because we saw that they both prefer rocks, but it's still quite strange that where there is more uh, algae, there is more urchins because, well, urchins eat algae, so in theory, uh, if there is a high amount of urchins, uh, algae coverage would decrease. This could be explained, as has been seen in other places uh, in, the, in the French coast, in which the urchin's abundance is not high enough to actually have an impact on the algae, algae coverage change, uh, because, for example, Riton et al. found also in, in France that uh, it was needed seven, around seven uh, sea urchins per square meter to actually have an impact on the algae coverage, and, uh, well, here we found a much lower abundance. Also, uh, the, this low abundance of the urchins might be due to the seasonality of the sampling, because the, the sampling was made uh, uh, every year in September, which is after summer. So since this is a place which is highly visited for tourists, maybe they go with their boats, they have fun, and maybe they fish some, some urchins. So the, the abundance that we see may not be actually reflecting what is the situation of the urchins' abundance in, in the land silence, as well as the seasonality on the reproductive um, uh, yeah, on the reproductive uh, cycles of the sea urchins. Uh, finally, there is one possibility that we consider that might be interesting to explore. Um, that is the fact that in other places of the Mediterranean, in Spain, it has been found that sea urchins, uh, even if they are well-known herbivores, they can include other invertebrates in their diet. Uh, so this uh, is not necessarily in situations where you have low coverage of algae, but uh, is given to, uh, like, it, it's, a, it's a strategy to um, uh, minimize the, the competition it might happen between the two main uh, sea urchin species. So, you know, this, this is just the pattern that has been seen in other places. So in order to understand if this is really what is going on in Leran Islands, uh, it should be necessary to measure uh, the populations of sea urchins during the whole year and uh, do some predation uh, experiments. Okay, so to conclude, this uh, presentation and this research wanted to give a first overview about the relationship of the abundance between the sea urchins, what they eat, the algae coverage, and who eat them, the predators. 
We found that sea urchins prefer places, or well, seem to prefer places where we have al high algae coverage, meaning maybe that the, the, their abundance is not high enough to have a, an impact on the algae coverage. But we didn't find a trend between uh, sea urchins and, and its predators, because predators seem to have where there is a lot of urchins and where there is no urchin. So uh, if we want to further uh, explore this topic in the run silence, it's important that we understand that this overview can only give us information about the pattern that we are seeing in the, in the, in the, in the ecosystems. In fact, this is a measurative experiment, which means that uh, uh, our, our sampling was made through observation and there is no manipulation of the variables and of the parameters. So we cannot really understand what are the mechanisms going, going on behind these, uh, these patterns of abundance. Um, so, Finally, before we finish, we want to thank uh, the coordination of all the teachers of, of MARES, uh, in particular, well, Christophe and Crystal for all the patience and persistence for taking the data. Uh, the effort that has been made for all, by all the students of MARES and SCHEMA for, uh, during the last years to have a long-term ecological monitoring, which is very valuable, and well, all the teachers that have transmitted us the passion to Mediterranean ecosystems uh, study.